Australians. Australians, as we all know, are living longer and they want the security and protections that the aged care sector will provide for them in their twilight years. And the Morrison government is passionate in leading, improving and reforming this aged care sector. Yes, I know there can be complaints that it's not happening fast enough, but let's be very clear. This sector has been changing incredibly rapidly, and that is because of the population bubble that is occurring before our very eyes. We know that Australians are ageing or getting older uh, and getting healthier in the process. And there is a baby boomer bubble that is ahead of us with more Australians over the age of 80 by 2030 than ever before in our history. Steady economic growth, smaller nuclear families and a high propensity for people to have uh, working later into their older years means that there is more need for aged care facilities than ever before. So this bill before us today is a step, before, a step towards much needed reform. This bill, bill introduces a serious incident response scheme for residential aged care and flexible care delivered in residential aged care settings. Mr Deputy Speaker, it can be very hard to entrust others to care for your loved ones. I personally know how it feels. I experienced this with my father. He had a long career as a doctor and later in life developed Alzheimer's. Because of his career as a doctor, he knew what it was like to care for patients with dementia. He knew what lay ahead. And as I said in my first speech in this house, it was heartbreaking to watch as this gentleman who cared for so many with this disease himself was tortured by it. But throughout his slow and unrelenting deterioration, he never once complained. In the last year before his death, he lost the faculty for speech, but he had two words left, thank you. Dad's gratitude for the family and life he was given was boundless. But I know, as a daughter, putting my father into aged care was a step that was very difficult. As a family, we kept my, fa my father at home as long as possible because we wanted to care for him in his own home. It can be very, very challenging for those who have loved ones in aged care, and even more challenging if that loved one is unable to communicate with you, and you have no option but to trust the people of which you employed to care for your loved ones. It can be so unsettling for families and loved ones, and this bill will help give them a sense of comfort. Man, Mr Deputy Speaker, the Australian Government has no tolerance for abuse and neglect in aged care. Our Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, cares deeply about this issue and it was his first Royal Commission that was called as Prime Minister was into aged care. So it's something that has been very much at the centre of his agenda. Australians have rights which do not diminish with age. This bill will see improved legal frameworks which will provide appropriate protections and safeguards for older Australians who should be enjoying their golden years without having to face any form of abuse. This bill will also provide much needed confidence of those loved ones who have placed a family into aged care. Mr Debbie Speaker, this bill implements key recommendations from the Australian Law Reform Commission's report entitled Elder Abuse and National Legal Response and the Review of National Aged Care Quality Regulatory Processes, handed down by Ms Kate Carnell and Professor Ron Patterson. The bill is also consistent with the national plan to respond to the abuse of older Australians and aims to address issues raised in the Council's assisting final submissions to the Royal Commission into aged care quality and safety. The Serious Incident Response Scheme will replace current responsibilities of, appro of approved providers of residential aged care and flexible care delivered in a residential aged care setting in relation to reportable assaults and unexplained absences in the Aged Care Act. The bill will require approved providers to manage incidents and take reasonable steps to prevent incidents, including through implementing and maintaining effective organisation-wide governance systems for management and reporting of incidents of abuse and neglect. Mr Deputy Speaker, as both a previous chair of a school council and as a board member of a hospital, I know how important these checks and balances are. 
The bill will also require proof providers of residential care and flexible care delivered in aged care setting to report all serious incidents to the Aged Care Quality and Safety Commission. A wider range of incidents, including but not limited uh, to unreasonable use of force, unlawful sexual contact or inappropriate sexual contact, conduct, psychological or emotional abuse, unexpected death, stealing or financial coercion by a staff member, neglect, inappropriate physical or chemical restraint and unexplained absence from care will all be reportable. The Serious Incident Response Scheme will also remove the existing exemption for reporting assaults where the alleged perpetrator is a residential aged care recipient with cognitive or mental impairment and the victim is another care recipient. I know that might seem shocking for those listening to hear such a step is required, but we need to remain alert, not alarmed. These events do happen and we cannot turn a blind eye to them. This bill will also strengthen protections for people who disclose incidents of abuse or neglect in aged care. These protections will extend to both existing and former staff members, as well as current and past residential aged care recipients, their families and others supporting them, including volunteers and advocates. This bill will protect people disclosing such failures against any civil or criminal liability. Mr Deputy Speaker, as for any system, whistleblowers need courage to speak out. But more than that, they need protection from a natural innate tendency for organisations to protect themselves against criticism. An open, transparent and accountable system provides an important underpinning to build trust in an organisation. Whistleblower protection is just such a mechanism that builds trust. All Australians would want to have this protection for themselves and their loved ones. This bill will also expand the Aged Care Quality and Safety Commission's powers to enforce the requirements of the Serious Incident Response Scheme and the responsibilities of approved providers and related offences more generally. These will include standard regulatory powers, which provide the Commission with a more graduated suite of powers for ensuring compliance and protecting consumers. An additional information gathering power will also ensure the Commission is able to obtain the information and documents it requires to administer the Serious Incident Response Scheme. But, Mr Deputy Speaker, we are not simply stopping there. We are not simply stopping at residential aged care. We are extending these provisions into other aspects of the aged care sector. That is why the government has also put forward a feasibility study to inform future government decisions on the potential introduction of a similar serious incident response scheme in both home and community aged care. Mr Deputy Speaker, this bill is further proof of the Morrison government's commitment to improving aged care for all senior Australians and remains one of the government's key priorities. We are delivering record investment across the aged care sector from $13.3 billion in 2012-2013 under Labor, growing to $23.9 billion in 2020-2021 under our Morrison government. It is estimated funding for aged care will grow to more than $27 billion by 23-2024. Senior Australians are increasingly choosing to remain in their own homes for longer. This is something our government is committed to and supports. We believe in supporting choice. More than $746 million in aged care COVID-19 response measures have been part of the $1.6 billion in COVID-specific support in aged care. This investment in the budget will see an additional 23,000 home care packages to help care for older Australians in their home in this financial year. And that is because we recognise Australians want to stay home longer they want to stay healthy and they want to stay in their own homes. In conclusion, Mr Deputy Speaker, the Morrison government has delivered and will continue to deliver on aged care. This bill enables the next phase of aged care reform, which would, I hope will be a bipartisan approach across the government. Working together to ensure we are delivering the best possible outcomes and protections to our older Australians living within an aged care sector now and into the future. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I thank the member for Higgins. The immediate question is that the words proposed to be omitted stand part of the question. I call the member for Lyons. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And, uh, 
the safety of older Australians has never been more critical than it's been in the past.